Shenzhen skyline is growing rapidly and is regarded as one of the best in the world. The city currently has over 23 buildings going well over 200 meters in height. The tallest building in Shenzhen is now the King Klee 100. Funny enough, it has 100 floors full of office and hotel spaces. It's not only the tallest building in Shenzhen, but one of the tallest in all of southern China. Hey, let's let them see for themselves. Welcome back, everyone. Varadi, did you know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is, this is a bit of version because you like, you gave all this knowledge yesterday. You were like, I'll show everyone one up. I've done my research on the tallest towers around the world, not just Shenzhen. Uh, but yeah, a little sneak peek at you know, what we get to see in Shenzhen. You know, when I first got here, I'm not going to lie, I was like, man, it's just like, it just feels a little bit like another big city. You know, I used to live in Seoul and whatnot. But then the more I spend time here, like the skyline at night and stuff, it's actually really cool. Yeah. There are some really cool buildings. I was just about to say, like, it's actually very sad that I've seen more of this city on these little videos than I actually did by myself <laughs> while being here. It's just like this. I've had the worst jet lag of my life. I keep arriving in my hotel room at 7. I'll be like, ah, you know, I'll lay down for two minutes. And then I wake up at 11.53 in sheer panic, thinking I overslept for the next day. And it's like, this just happened two days in a row. Like, I've never been this boring in my life, Chobra. <laughs> yeah, like, that's not what we expect for you, right? I, I know. Like, I, I wake up to, like, Pick, taking pictures of me and sharing it with you guys on WhatsApp, like, oh, look at Ruddy, he's so cute, he fell asleep with his clothes in the bed. It's like, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Vic, you're a great friend. I was told you were going to be like the party guy, yeah. you know, I'm rooming with Ruddy, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I come in 8 p.m. every night, you're out cold. Pig <laughs> oh, was so excited too, Pig was so excited for Shenzhen. But, yeah. you know, we still got a couple, we still got a couple days yeah. left. Hopefully, we get to take a little closer look at the city. Yeah, I mean, yesterday, uh, yeah, Sean and I are out, and yeah, there's a lot more people out at night. I'm sure we'll get to check that out later, but uh, it's very different from the day because it is very hot and humid during the day, just the weather. But yeah, pretty neat city. I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, but right now, we do have two players who are not too pleasantly surprised with where they are right now. I mean, sure, they get another chance, but we are in the final match, the decider match of Group C. It is going to be Uthermal and Jim going at it again. Now, both of them... Uh, Finding a way to get back into this course, Uthermal had to climb back into it after taking Cyan down 2-0 on the second stream. And Jim, oh man, he was so close to tying it 1-1 against Hero. Absolutely. Things are always easier said than done, but this was kind of the way we expected this bracket to play out. Yeah. It's got to be a good feeling in terms of the mental game to have that win behind you, get that confidence. Well, what's Uthermal been saying the last few days? This is my first time in Asia. Well, I flew here alone. My, like, he had some troubles with his flights. You know, <laughs> he had a lot of humidity. troubles, man. Yeah, and like now he gets this win behind him, and he's like, okay, all right, I'm feeling it a bit more. And I, like I've been saying, if you look at him in the booth, I mean, he does look a little bit stressed just there, but generally his mindset has been getting better and better this year. He's become such a strong mental player, and that's such an important part of going into this match. I think he's going to be a lot calmer, and I think he actually could have learned more about Jim's play style than Jim learned about him in the previous series. Yeah, there are still a couple of people who are like, you term, I've heard that name, but how good is he really? Well, just to put things in perspective, when he qualified for this event, he defeated Lil Bao, Bunny, Harstam, and Snoot in a row. Just That's, one do upper yeah. record. Those are four of the arguably strongest players in Europe. And, you know, to go back to what you asked, Pick, normally I think it's very nice, you know, to win a series and it's frustrating to lose the first one, so he has a little bit of momentum. But I really think that Uthermal knew all along that it was most likely going to come down to this best of three. So, yeah. you know, I think other scenarios, yeah, sometimes, but when you have a Titan like Hero in your group, of course you go in with the best intentions. <laughs> Nobody goes in with it like, well, I'm going to get shrugged by Hero. This is going to be lovely you know like everybody has dreams and ambitions but when you're realistic you're like okay even if that doesn't go right it doesn't go right for me it will probably come down to that final best of three against Jim so the fact that he's here right now and I think the same goes for Jim the fact that Jim is here right now yeah. is not, not a big uh, upset for either of them yeah I think you're right you know when you said earlier that it doesn't matter who won that first match I mean sure Jim was close to trying to tie it up with Euro but at the end I think both players are alright you know what this is probably what we expected when we came into the venue this morning that we would meet again no matter who won the first match we're here and Jim uh, in some ways you can switch that around right you can say, you know what, yeah, you made some mistakes, but at the very least, I was actually really close to tying a series with Hero and trying to get the win. That's not something that a lot of players can brag about. No? 
Uh, I would feel happy about it. Uh, <laughs> on one hand, like PvP, it's really weird. I think uh, very few pro players around the world uh, find a lot of satisfaction in a loss. Like PvP is just an annoying matchup, and everybody yeah. hates losing it. I love playing <laughs> it, but I hate losing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is one of those kind of tricky matchups where, yeah, if, if you win, it can feel really good, but at the same time, it's the reverse when you lose. Well, again, it's down to this one best of three to decide who moves on to the quarterfinals. Will it be you, Thermal, making a bigger run in his first time here in Asia, or Jim? Can he try to top his record from last year at the Intel Street Master Shenzhen? We'll find out with Apollo and Artosis. Hopefully he can calm down a little bit. I think, you know, he's had enough games now that maybe he's going to be in the groove. I definitely think we're going to see some better play out of you, Thermal. Well, Jim's just poked inside his opponent's main base, seeing that it is going to be a Reaper expand. So even though you, Thermal, was looking outside his main base, this is going to be difficult to find, especially on these new maps. Yes, that that is exactly what I was going to say if you didn't say it, but you said it because you're Apollo and you're great. But new maps proxies are so strong on because you don't have it down all the good proxy locations so it's yeah. actually very hard to scout them all well whether you're zerg with uh speed zerglings and overlords whether you're Terran with a reaper or you know i mean euthermal has gone inside this main base and you know you can put two and two together to realize there is a pylon missing mm -hmm. it's just where is it yeah and that's that's a very tough one to find I mean, does he even realize that a pylon is missing at this point? He should do, shouldn't he? Yeah, I think he, that check right there might have been to see if there's... Sometimes Protoss like to put a pylon behind the natural to try to make you think there's one missing, so your yeah. Reaper just uh, buzzes off for a little bit. Well, the Reaper's not too active, so I'm not too sure what's going on, but he's going to go inside the main base once again, but he's pushed back by Stalker, so I don't think he's really clicked onto the pylon being missing. Or is he has still... Uh, gone for what he wanted to do, which is Hellions and Marines, and now with the Starport finishing up, we are going to see a Medivac Maze, and it is going to be a Dark Shrine here coming from Jim. <laughs> I like where he plays that on the other side of the grass. You know, maybe if uh, there's like a small percent chance if a Reaper went in from the other side, he just wouldn't even check. No, he'd maybe turn around once he finds the Twilight Council and like, oh. Yeah. yeah, it might be. Maybe. You're like, oh no, Blink's coming. And then DTs. The Shrekening from the Dark Templar. Two Hellions, they're going to move forward straight into the Mineral Line. Only a Mothership Core here, so Probes are very vulnerable. One's going to go down, a second one is going to get targeted, and potentially third and maybe a fourth, but no, it's just going to be three, so nice little dart run in there from you, Thermal. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it looks completely fine so far for Jim. You know, only losing three Probes. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good to kill three Probes off, but if that's what he did with his early harassment, you're like, okay, I guess, you know, the the DT, uh, you know, possibly drop coming up eventually. He's well, I guess he'll no just go idea. DTs first and then into drop, but yeah. he'll get more than three SCVs. Yeah, the engineering bay only just now starting, but the Dark Shrine is moments away from finishing. Euthermal's fully concentrated on trying to land these Widow Mines, I would imagine, inside that Medivac. And the Pylon is just outside the main base here. Well, here we go. Coming in right now with these Widow Mines and the Mothership Core just sitting there. A late pull on these probes, but just in time. Yep, single one comes out. He's going to try and get another couple of probes here. Two are... Oh, wow. No, just a single one. So two probe kills for two Widow Mines. He's yeah. gone inside the main base. He's obviously not seen the Twilight Council or Dark Tempo because it's on the other side of the map. And here comes the first one. Engineering bait is finished, but no turrets have begun yet. Only just now one starting. Mm, and it looks like he's... Oh, he's starting one in both lines. Going to go ahead to the main base with this Dark Tempo. Oh, but he, he catches it. it. With concussive wow. shells here with the Marauders. He gets us around with the SCVs. Excellent find there by Euthermal. And with turrets now finishing up in each mineral line, that was insanely good. This, that was this worked out impressive. completely perfectly for you, Thermal. He has to be feeling fantastic right now. Yeah, two Dark Templars down for two scans. Yeah, they didn't kill anything at all. So that's some expensive tech. Don't forget that's yeah. out on the map, but he hasn't scouted it yet. So we don't know. That, that He might be able to get Blink and Charge out of there before that thing gets found. Looks like Jim's not done, though. Warp Prism is on its way. He's going to try and continue the investment that he's thrown into the Dark Shrine and maybe get some Dark Templar inside that main base. But he has set a lot of his tech down. I mean, the robotic space should have been finished. Blink should have been finished. Maybe mm -hmm. a forge and an upgrade could have been kicked in if he hadn't have gone for the Twilight Council Dark Shrine. So these are things that Jim is missing yeah. compared to a usual game. Well, DT rushes are always a risk. Uh, and you throw playing very safely this game. So it's so good on him. But we do have a lot of gateways being added. Colossus on the way. Mm -hmm. Blink on the way as well. As long as he can keep you Thermal busy for a little bit, yep. he will have enough to hold off whatever comes. And a good find there by uh, that SCV. Moves in, sees the unit count very low, sees the robotics bay, realizes the transition. Even going to try and have a quick look up to this third base, realizing his opponent hasn't cut even more corners to be too greedy. Sees that his opponent's still on two bases. And a nice little bit of information gathering there from you, Thermal. 
All right, well, it looks like it's going to be the job of this Warp Prism to keep you thermal on the other side of the map because Jim going to be taking his third base right now. Uh, this is something that I feel like you thermal, if he really dedicated an attack, could absolutely force a cancel mm. on. He doesn't know, of course, yet that this is being taken, so he's yeah. going to get some reconnaissance done and, and possibly get that damage in there. Unfortunately, every single medivac has been spotted. There's two down south and one in the center <laughs> of the map that's just gone over the pylon. And Jim did actually, thinking back to his previous games, miss some very, very obvious scouting. Yeah. But this is obviously going to be picked up here as the units do unload. And then another medivac heading towards that third base. Shouldn't be able to get a cancel unless that's four marauders and Jim's out of position. No, it's, it's, yeah, a couple widow mines. Turns out widow mines do not hit nexuses. And even if they nope. did, it would take an awfully long time to kill one. So they're going to go ahead and zoom right into Whoa, this natural base. Jim, is he going to react in uh -oh. time to widow mines plant? There's a lot of probes there. Oh, hit. man. And he gets 12 oh. probes coming out. Excellent hits from you, Thermal. Just gigantic right there. Now he's going to go ahead and counter drop it. Stim Marine's already there. And these DTs are going to do next to nothing once again. Jim is so far behind. In fact, this third base could yeah. get attacked coming up. No SCVs going down there. Three Dark Templar and also the Warp Prism. And now U Thermal is on this third base. Going to put some Widow Mines to catch any units trying to defend this. And he's going for the Nexus. Units aren't too far away. Mm. Should be able to save this Nexus this time for sure with a couple Colossus mixed in here and Blink. So uh, U Thermal does back up, but overall this has been very successful by U Thermal. Yeah, a wonderful start here in the rematch for the Dutch player against Jim here, representing oh. China. Now, of course, we should mention there is still a third Whoa. base up here, so it looks like Uthermal going to go ahead and try to charge in. No, no spells out of that sentry there, so that was a little bit off. Oh my god, no force fields cast. And now the Colossus are very exposed. He's going to charge yeah. from here. If he brings these down, he's probably going to take map number one. One Colossus down, two Colossus down. Stalkers aren't going to do anything, which is going to leave this third Nexus completely exposed. And you, Thermal, a wonderful start from the European mm. here. GG. He's going to take game one. GG's called. Well and done. An uh, excellent performance, Artosis. That's much more what he was trying to do in game number three there with the, you know, going up to uh, like five racks before that third CC and whatnot and seeing what he can get done. Definitely did some strong yeah. damage. Uh, Jim kind of missing that drop coming in his natural. That was... That was pretty tough, and I'm not sure what happened during that last battle, but there was no real good battle micro there from Jim, unfortunately. Compared to the first series, I think Uthermal saying, that's exactly what I wanted to do mm -hmm. earlier on today, and he pulled it off there. Jim going to be a little bit flustered with that, but Uthermal now a single map away from moving to the quarterfinals here at the Intellect Stream Masters. We'll be right back to see if he can actually do it. Welcome back to Intel Extreme Masters Shenzhen. As you can see, it is bustling down here. We even have that weird blue turtle guy. Weird out blue in the turtle audience. guy giving something to did the you, audience. Did you get a uh, picture with him yet? I did not know. I'm going to hopefully get one a little bit later on. Okay. Um, there's, lot, there's a lot to do here at the uh, Cartoon and Animation Festival in Shenzhen where we're currently having the Intel Extreme Masters. It's humid and a lot hotter today than the previous That's what Chobra's day. telling me, but I'm a lizard with no body heat, so I just don't feel the difference. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's kind of weird, Autosis. Makes a lot of sense for your diet, too. <laughs> you what happens when you eat iguana food, you become an iguana. Uh, well. I eat a lot of meat, so I guess I'm just a lion to you, Autosis. Do you eat lion meat? Yes. That's messed up. They're endangered. <laughs> Holy crap. Someone messaged WWF. Uh, well, uh, we just yeah, saw game one did, between these two. Did WWF look after lions? I thought they were just like a panda organization. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's their logo. I'm joking, Artosis. Game is loading. <laughs> Map number two between you, Thermal. I'm so glad you're joking. And Jim. I'm having a lot of fun sitting with you, Autos. Me, I, I love casting with you, Apollo. And I'm sure that if Why these guys could listen stop? to what we were saying, they'd be having a lot of fun, too. They'd be like, what the hell is this? And they'd get up Why? And <laughs> Why are they waving fans at each Why other? Why are they speaking the president's American? It's... Hey, come on, man. It's the Queen's English. We got... How many times have I got to tell you? More times than that. Well, you thermal versus Jim, guys. Game number two. In the top left of Cactus Valley. It is our Terran player winning game one, Youth Thermal. Mark Schlappy. Well, he wasn't so schlappy in that last game, was he? He was pretty tight, if you ask me. And his opponent in the top right, our Chinese pro, it's Jim. 
And Jim's real name, for anyone out there, is Jin Hui, if I say that right, or Jin Hui. 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 Um, so that's his, uh, his Chinese first name. Funny enough, his ID, he might as well have gone for it, Jim. Jin Hui, Jim in StarCraft 2. Both players born in 1995, Artosis makes us feel very old. 1995? 1995, both players pretty good 19 year. years old. So basically when these guys were four, I was already practicing StarCraft. Yes. And they were four years. Back then I could beat them. Not now. <laughs> Back then though, yeah. <laughs> Slaughter those literal noobs. They'd probably be crybabies about it too, literally. Literally. Yeah. Did you know Artosis? Here's yes. a funny fact. Um, Jim is $8,000 shy in his StarCraft II earnings of $100,000. Whoa, that's like almost $93,000 in earnings. It is. <laughs> and it's almost $7,000 short of 100. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a lot of money though, actually, when you think about it. Uh, you know, For a 19 year old too. Yeah, like uh, the prices of things in China aren't, ne aren't nearly as high as a lot of other countries, so. It's a lot of money. Yeah, we had the most delicious dinner last night for five people. For how much money was that? It was, it was four like to five dollars each. Yeah. It was wonderful. Uh, Euthermal sent it out an early scout here with his Reaper expansion once again and finds his opponent in the first location. This is a four player map, so you can spawn in any of the bottom or top corners. Mm -hmm. So, luckily, lucky Euthermal gets in there nice and early. And, uh,. Nice to see the scout, and he actually, it's a, it's a pretty valuable scout, right? Because he sees two gases yeah. before a nexus, and that definitely tells you that they're going to be teching up very quickly afterwards. Kind of points towards Oracle, but there's a few other things it could be as well. Well, the Zealots has been started, and looks like it is going to be cancelled there. No, it's going to be safe because the SCV is around to actually delay this Nexus for a little bit here, so a good start again by Euthermal. As the Zealot goes down, the Reaper pops up. Main catch a probe here that's moving down to actually build that Nexus. Oh, you don't want to lose a probe oh. to a Reaper. That's I mean, like worse than losing a drone to a Reaper. And now a Stalker has started as well before the Nexus here. Yeah, this is kind of funky. He's really been mm. unbelievably slowed down by that scout. And man. an engineering bay <laughs> here by Euthermal. Yeah. Very early on. It's going to be able to uh, get that plus one attack super early. Yeah, and I, I think also he wants to get a missile turret. He's probably looking at this and saying, this is such a slow nexus. You must be going Stargate right now. Yeah, he's going to have a quick look inside with this Reaper to see if he can confirm anything like that. Doesn't see too much. The Stalker is going to push it out, but he keeps the Reaper alive. And unfortunately for Jim, his probe scouting again, coming back to that four-player map thing we just mentioned, the mm -hmm. wrong way. That's rough. Uh, he's not going to know where he is for quite some time here, but he'll know in time to send mm. the Oracle in the right direction, so that's good at least. So this is a, uh, a dream start here for the player from the Netherlands. Oh. Indeed it is. Well, looks like we have a pause. Reaper inside the main base comes in and even spots the Stargate. Everything is just falling into place for you, Thermal. Yeah. Uh, Jim in a little bit of trouble, but the thing is, Jim is a very strong player. Uh, I think a lot of people have been kind of underestimating him. Even if he gets eliminated here, the guy is still very highly ranked yeah. on the Korean server, top 50, yeah. he was saying, uh, in GM. And it looks like he's going for Phoenix Colossus, which he's quite good with. Do you think this is because it was spotted and he could have gone for the Oracle and then he switched into Phoenix? I think with everything going wrong, you're like, okay, is this Oracle going to do literally anything? Yeah. And did he cancel to Phoenix? It didn't finish, did it? Yeah. Or did it? Okay, sorry. Whoa, way ahead of myself. Chrono, Chrono boosted uh, Phoenix's build oh. awfully quick. Oh my god, second pause of the tournament. Back into the game, Autosis. All right. Well, uh, anyways, the uh, the Phoenix play, I like it. I, if he lives into a, a few Colossi, Jim becomes very scary with uh, Phoenix Colossus. I think he's quite a good player of it. You know, it's something that, if I recall correctly, when he came and played in Korea in yeah. SSL against Mario, didn't he do it like three games or something? I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh, and there's a scan from you, Thilmo, to have a quick look inside the main base. And he sees behind enemy lines three Phoenix and a Stargate still mm. active. No robotics bay down yet, just additional gateways coming into play. And he backs off. What do you think is the correct reaction from you, Thermal, now? Does he start putting pressure on? Does he want to be very active, very defensive? Well, I, here's the thing. Against Phoenix, I think it can be a little bit tricky. You know he can't really attack you early. Yep. So I think that you really want to get your third CC up ASAP. Yep. Uh, and I think the main thing is just to keep a death ball. You have to play yep. death ball versus death ball. If you start trying to do drops, you should lose. 
like theoretically you should lose. Maybe you, maybe you yeah. end up out playing your opponent or he makes a mistake or something, but yep. it, it becomes very, very tough. All right then. Well, he then will pokes forward. He actually grabs a zealot for free. Does not lose a single unit so far. For no photo no overcharge was forced out. I think that's his uh, probably ultimate goal here. Hmm. But he's going to poke forward again. He does not have stim, remember, so he can't just charge forward. He'd risk losing everything now. The unit count starting to rise up for Jim, and Ethermal does back off. Yeah, and uh, you know Ethermal is just kind of staying with the same type of style that we've been seeing from him. Yeah, uh, he's just continuing to tech up. We don't see the command yet. I just want to see if he goes up to five racks here, or he goes command center here, because. I mean, I, okay, he is going up to five racks. Yeah. And I, I got to ask your opinion on this, because in my opinion, against this type of Phoenix play, like, there's no way he can attack you and you shouldn't be attacking him, right? He's, like, making multiple mortals. He's going to go directly into Colossus, obviously. Uh, he's sitting on two base for extra time. Shouldn't... I feel like Euthermal should just make a third CC before these Raxes. Well, do you think he could play a very Maru-esque style and drop, you know, and, and Doom drop in two places and having such a low Colossus count, it could be very difficult to deal with? Or the Maybe. Phoenix? I mean, I, I wouldn't want to try that against lots yeah. of Phoenixes, but uh, if, if he feels confident, the thing is, I don't like anyone that's dropping against a two-base Protoss. Yeah. Two-base Protoss yeah. should be able to stop all your drops, yeah. so... Well, Jim has an observer here, sees this small little squadron from Euthermal pushing forward. He moves to intercept, but once again, Euthermal backs off, and he has a Marine down right to have a quick look. Is there a third? No, there is not. So he retreats back. Third command center has been placed down. He sees the probe there actually about to build the third Nexus, and stims and kills it. So he does know his opponent's about to move forward here. Where is his medivacs? He scans, he sees the army. Is he going to try and plant himself in the main base? Where are the phoenixes, remember? Yeah, they are uh, actually up, kind of patrolling yeah. in that area a little bit. Well, not patrolling, but you know. Chilling. Sitting there. Flying, wasting energy and Sitting in that position. And Observer is tracking this army on top of it. Combat Shield is now about to finish up as Euthermal looks for an opening. He's got 1-1 one, one upgrades completed due to that very, very early engineering bay. Yeah. And that's actually a, a big strength against Colossus uh, Phoenix. You have to skip a few upgrades. Your upgrades are much slower yeah. uh, than they normally are. So I really do like double eBay play against that as well. But it looks like Euthermal wants to do a little bit of uh, pressure here, pushing in right now. Not going to be able to do too much damage, it looks like, though. Oh, there's a lot and of Phoenixes with a lot of energy here. And he picks up the charge of this, and Euthermal gets completely pushed back here in Autosis. And as you said, attacking into this can be very difficult. Uh, one Widowmine hit does hit those. Yeah, I mean, is, but he lost a lot. I, I have to be just slightly critical here. I feel like Euthermal is not being very flexible in his play. He's like, well, I went five racks before yeah. the CC, so I attack now. And it's against this type of play, I don't think mm. that's what you want to do at all. And I think. Jim may be feeling a bit of weakness here, whooping in a lot of units. He's killed mm. off a lot of this army. He's got two Colossus alive. There are no Vikings in play. And Jim, just this is how Jim likes to play. Mm. When he smells weakness, he'll absolutely jump at the opportunity, and he's moving forward. Even picking up that widow mine, not and able to get just, any hits. Got nothing left after that fight. Yeah, he's he's in some real trouble right now, Apollo. And just like that, you thermal being one game away from moving to the quarterfinals may have just thrown this opportunity away in map number two. Defensive widow mines have been planted, but a, a mm. wonderful army. There's still a time warp available on this yeah. mothership core. You like just can't attack into that. And even though he's adding some marauders and Vikings right now, yeah. there's already Phoenixes out and there's already two immortals out. So right. none of those units are going to help that much. Really. SCVs are probably going to have to be pulled here. You thermals in a very desperate situation, and Jim is coming for the victory to equalize this series up. Time warp goes down, traps almost all of the bio there, and the two Colossus doing so much mm. damage, even with a third coming in as well. And you thermals getting absolutely punished here. Yeah, just uh, GG. Kind wow. of rigid play there from you, Thermal. Not really uh, taking into account what Jim's strategy was in this game. So, uh, you know, Jim able to pick that one up. And yeah. I think that that's the style that Jim should... He should look at that and say, oh, wow, he didn't really react to my change in styles this game. Yeah. And I think that he should try that again in game, again in game three. I think that's going to be Jim's best chance. Bit of a smirk there from you, Thermal. But one thing he has to take away from this as well as what you've said. Another thing, I suppose, then, is that you just can't be making mistakes. As good as he played in game number one, you mm -hmm. cannot make mistakes against Jim because you will absolutely just be counted and you'll be ended. Yeah. And he saw that and felt it then. He definitely has the killer instinct. You don't get top 50 GM on the Korean server without that. And uh, that is kind of what we always have seen in Jim's play. So, Euthermal going to have to tighten it up a little bit. But uh, definitely one of the best Terrans in all of Europe. Definitely a player that can give Jim a run for his money and possibly advance over him.
Looks like Ben Q sticks are being handed out there by that woman in the bottom left. Ooh, thunder sticks. Love myself some thunder sticks. They're always fun. No thunder last night. No, there wasn't. There was thunder the night before, and it Thank woke God. everybody up. Yeah, I, I needed my thunder buddy Apollo there. Ah, oh, I know. I'm so sorry. I forgot which uh, which floor you were on. I did think about coming. Yeah. Give you a quick cuddle in the night, and then go back to sleep. <laughs> that would that would have helped me out. Put your thumb back in your mouth, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Tuck me back in. Tuck you I back in. I the covers off when the, when the thunder <laughs> came. I was like, oh! <laughs> Give you a quick kiss on the forehead. Mm -hmm. Wish you good night. Mm -hmm. But it was Chobra, the one that came to see me, actually, of all things. Oh, really? Okay. It was. Is he trying to steal my thunder, buddy? He is. Chobra's trying to steal a lot of things at this event. <laughs> <laughs> you said them sticky fingers, man. Those sticky fingers. New Thermal versus Jim, game three. Here we go on Iron Fortress, down to the bottom left-hand side. It is the player from the Netherlands representing AT Gaming here in China. It is you, Thermal. One chance, one opportunity. One shot. One shot. Will he take it or will he let it slip? Mom's spaghetti. Chobra spaghetti. <laughs> Ooh, only because he stole it. And his opponent in the top right from China winning that last game. It is Jim. Jim right now is one of two remaining Chinese players in the tournament. We've got XY, who will be playing in a little bit, or Xi, I think you Shy. Be. Shy. Shy is actually how you say it. I prefer XY. Um, <laughs> but I that's... see. Yeah, no, I prefer Idra over Idra. Yes. And so I call him that. And uh, But I, 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 uh, I think the first time I casted Shy was actually in China, and someone came up to me immediately and was like, really? how do you pronounce that Shy? And I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll try and remember that and make sure Chobra says it properly on the desk, because I know he calls him X-Y. Uh, I'll make sure to speak to him about that a little bit we later on. We should just spell Chobra with an X in the front, since we're in China, and it makes kind of the same noise. Yes. Kind of the same sound, and like, then that'll Chobra. remind him. Chobra. Chobra. He's like, it's Chobra, guys. No, Chobra. Shroba. 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 We should do it with everyone's name. Shrotty. <laughs> Shrotterdam. <laughs> Shrotterdam. <laughs> I'm so glad he couldn't hear that. And once again, New Thermal going to move right into the main base with this early scout and finds his opponent immediately once again wow. and sees the double gas again. He's got the luck of the Irish over here with his scouting on four-player maps, doesn't he? He does. Could have sworn he was Dutch. He is from the Netherlands. Roddy has said that multiple times this event. Indeed. He's very, very proud of his fellow Dutch players. Yep, Haas them as well. I heard that uh, Roddy is becoming an American now. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard he, if he had the choice to switch his passport from the Netherlands to the U.S., he would actually choose the U.S. So mm. I don't think he can start to befriend players like you, Thermal, anymore. I guess he's got to go over to the American players. Yeah, he's going to have to change his name from Rotterdam to San Bernardino, where he drinks cappuccinos with Al Pacino, ripping pepperinos. I told us went there. SCV going to delay this Nexus again. Reapers come in to help. If he can get into this main base Artosis, hmm. get a probe kill or not. Well, with the Mothership Core popping out, shouldn't be able to get a probe kill. You never really want to lose a probe to a, no. to a Reaper. It's actually... I would say, would you say it's... With, with the One Gas Expand, it's worse to lose a probe to a Reaper than a drone to a Reaper, right? Yes. Yeah. It's more acceptable to lose that drone. Even though you shouldn't be losing the... I think it'll... No, you shouldn't lose either. I, I would imagine. I think it was about six, maybe more, maybe more than that ago. Is It was acceptable to lose a drone. You're like, oh, it's, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. But nowadays, nowadays no. it's like, no. Nowadays, no, no, nowadays no, no, you no. lose more than two Zerglings. It's like, what are yeah. you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Stargate has now been planted by Jim, just slightly right there of the Nexus, which the Reaper should be wanting to... Okay, we're going to see We're going to see how good you are at guessing. Is this going to be Oracle or Phoenix? Let me, let me find a coin. I don't have a coin. I do have my fan, though. If it lands on the guy with the blue hair, it is going to be an oracle. If it lands on the girl with the pink hair, it's a phoenix. All right, do it. It's a phoenix. Pink hair. Phoenix. Pink hair. Phoenix. All right, so he'll be going into Phoenix Colossus here once again, which is a good choice. Mothership Core coming down here, and he's going to harass a little bit. Well, what is he going to find? There isn't to be there, but nope. He just finds where his mm. opponent is more so than anything else, I suppose, since he hasn't actually scouted yet. But here comes the Reaper. Hop, skip, and jump towards the back of this base. Yep, wants to see, and uh, he'll probably kill off this Reaper before he starts that piece. Oh, he starts it right away. Yep. The wise fan toss. Fan was correct. 
And here comes the two Hellions here. I think Fable. that's your number one fan, Apollo. <laughs> it's my only fan, Autosis. <laughs> Two Hellions going to be heading towards that mineral line once again. Yeah, a couple got, more on the way as well. Yeah, he got three pro kills last time, if you remember, or in that first game. He's got two good hits here. One probe only, though, but he does keep them both alive. All right. Uh, pretty good defense so far. Now, he's, he's continuing to make uh, Phoenixes. Now, uh, with that with that uh, medevac popping out, if the Phoenix finds it before, it, like, somewhere towards the middle of the map, that would be amazing for Jim. Yeah. That would be Jim Credible. In Jim fact. Credible. There's only one thing better than Jim Credible. What is that? RT McCredible! <laughs> it's so stupid, oh my god! It's the dumbest thing you ever said. <laughs> On the long list of dumb Apollo things. <laughs> it's so dumb, it's funny. Oh man. All right, big drop coming in here from New Thermal. That is a Seven lot of Marines Hellions. in that medivac. And then a lot of Hellions here. How much damage is he going to really get done? Well, he has these uh, two on the ramp, and he's actually going to let him in, but he lifts ah. them up. Very nicely done. Only uh, two left over, but they can deal a lot of damage before he gets over there. He's trying to target the Phoenixes, but these Marines just weren't doing anything to them here. There's two lines inside the main base, got three probe kills, but we have to say this is a pretty good defense so far from Jim, and all he's got to do is clean up the rest of these units. There's five or so Marines left, and here comes another lift. Oh man, uh, oh, this, wow. was, this was just an amazing defense right here from Jim and you Thermal in a lot of trouble now. He just, that was yeah, not enough damage. Wow. That was a big investment there. He comes in for a couple more probe kills, so he actually turns that three probe kills into six by getting yeah. an extra couple more. And that one earlier from the two Hellions, oh. but uh, not was ideal. that enough for that much? I don't think so. If you think about either. his infrastructure compared to where Jim's is, mm. the two extra barracks just been added on, the stim only just now starting because he spent so much time building up the Hellion count. Yeah. And now the Phoenix is on the rebound. Oh, two oh, 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 oh that boom. was amazing. Okay, Excellent. everything's fine now. Excellent positioning from that. Really wow. great anticipation from the Dutchman. I, I wish we had a, a shot at Jim's face there. Yeah. Because it would have contorted into a grimace, no doubt. No doubts. That's I was just trying so to rough. think of something else to say, but I almost spurted out a bit of water. Which I don't actually have in my mouth, so I don't know what that was, to be honest. That would be called saliva, saliva or spit. <laughs> Widow Mine's getting into positions to scout, kill, deny. Three important words there. <laughs> Indeed. But uh, you should know if you're a StarCraft player or viewer. Mm -hmm. You thermal back up to the five barracks once again, and he's going to go for the similar style. Maybe. He's got to be careful. Uh, well, what are you doing? What is your plan when you go up to five racks here? Uh, build a lot of units, Autosis. I know, but like, can you? Are you actually going to kill him? The thing is, if Jim takes his third base too quickly, yeah. then absolutely the five racks play yes. can pay off in dividends. But if he scouts that, which should be not very hard considering his observers as well as yep. Phoenixes, he should be able to look at that and say, okay, I just take a much slower third. Yeah. And I never die. I mean, the same thing. You Thilmo can say the, the exact same thing you just said, though, too, right? He can say, I can take a much slower well, he can say whatever die. he wants. He's a, he's a free human, but yeah. Well, that, that's true. Well, he's not really that free because he's from Europe. Not, not compared to where you're from, no, obviously. No, where we speak, the president's um, American. The Queen's English, bro. <laughs> like, i got to keep telling you this, but... But no, you're, you're I guess you'll right. eventually sink in. If you I can... keep telling you, you'll eventually get it in your head. It's the Queen's English. Anyway, I think you Thilmo is going to play a little bit safer with his five barracks mm. compared to more aggressive. Especially the way that Jim was so cutthroat in that previous game. Yeah. You don't want to lose a few units trying to get over ambitious on your attack and, and uh, end up dying from it. So, looks like yeah. he's already sending some uh, SCVs out. Too. Yeah, good to see both players just playing safe. I mean, this is mm. the decider map to move to the quarterfinals. This is the last map of Group C. One of these players will join CJ Hero along with TY and Lucera, who advance from Group A and Classic and Snoot from Group B. And after we finish here, we'll be going to Group D, where, funny enough, we'll be having a player from Hong Kong play. That's pretty we'll, awesome. We'll see him at least once. Oh, Maybe yeah, that's twice, right. Because we right. do do the elimination game in Group mm -hmm. D. If he, if he does go to the elimination game, that is, I'm not saying that he will go there by all means, but there are some very good other players in that group. But you thermal now on the outskirts of Jim's headquarters. Well, let's see uh, what he wants to get done here. I don't think that he can actually get anything done at the moment. It seems like this army is just a little bit too strong here. Uh, third Colossus come down. Ooh, that would be a oh. very nice pickup if he could get it, but not quite. Yeah, Phoenix is on the hunt there, watching down yeah. to those two Marauders. Nice attempt, though, and pulls back in time, so no 
No harm, no foul. Right, trying to position these Widow Mines to give it an angle on this third Nexus. One of them gets picked up. Observer has come back now. Ooh, there are three Widow yeah. Mines here. He's going to be very careful he's about that. All his zealous to this if he charges Yeah, them. yeah, he's going to be really careful. Oh. Ooh, oh. that was... Oh, those were fantastic hits. Yeah, really good. He's going to... Oh, oh, he gets another man. one. man. Lots of damage put on these units. Taking a lot there. Phoenix is down very low. Zealot's low now as well. Euthermal's going to be happy with the three Widowmine hits. He's going to back off, also realizing he could be in a bit of trouble if he was to take a fight. But a big move and a big decision has been made by Euthermal. Yeah. Double Starport coming up right now, which means that we should be seeing about 50 million Vikings being made. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's uh, 50 million is a correct uh, prediction here? What's the supply this? cap in StarCraft 2? It's uh, a little bit less than 15 million, I suppose. Yeah, but how much supply is a Viking? It's two, three, three, two, four supply, two, five, six supply. No, two. Two, two supply. And the supply cap was what? 15 million. 50 million, so only 25 million Vikings then. Okay, he's going to need that to be able yeah, to stop Viking Glosses. I mean, Phoenix Glosses. Do you think it's worth trying to get a risk of a Medivac to squeeze to the main base? Because if it works, it's a great move. Well, but he knows where all the Phoenix are, for sure, right? Right. He sees them. It's not like you're leaving half your Phoenix home, so I think, well, yeah, I wonder if anyone he, would be great. I wonder if you can get in the Vikings out, because you, Jim is pushing down now. He's got four Colossus supported by Phoenixes. Right now, only three Vikings that be made a lot of the time. There's four Widow Mines to help wait a little bit, but... He's about to have Blink and uh, plus two as well. He has a decent number of Stalkers in here to support yeah. also. Viking Count needs to climb fast here. I mean, he can't speed it up, unfortunately, yeah, but he Jim needs to just, buy himself time. Jim needs to go. Like, he doesn't have very long before he, well, the, the Viking Count will be high enough. Jim's not going anywhere, Altosis. He wants to win this fight right now. He's not building any probes. He's continuing to bring in units. A fifth yeah. Colossus is coming down. Army supply very similar, but who is going to take the better fight here? Phoenixes are climbing slowly. Ah, the Phoenix is doing all right so far. Yeah. Has picked off some of these uh, Vikings. Oh. Blink forward, picks off another one. Very nicely done. SCB's coming to help. That is a lot of Colossus right there. They do have plus one attack as well. A flank comes up with those SCBs. That's Others a great on position the for Euthermal, though. I mean, he's spread so thin. Can he actually fight this? Look, oh, everything's man. melting here, Autosis. Looking fantastic right now for Euthermal. He's going to be able to cut down every Colossus, it looks like. Whoa. And yes, he does. He does it. He cuts this down, and that is a massive win for the player from Holland. And now with one final sweep, he could be moving to the quarterfinals, eliminating Jim here in the round of 16. He deals with that push, but he lost 34 SCVs to make that hold possible. He is down in economy. He mm -hmm. has to do this soon. Otherwise, he may not have a chance to move through Autosis because Jim yeah. is going to be building back up. Well, what does Jim do here? Because Jim, Jim, I can't see it, man. He doesn't have charge. And there are 13 Vikings out, so he's going to have zero splash and zero charge. Like, I don't, I think you just make gateway units only and as many stalkers as you can, but I don't, can't imagine that'll be enough against what Euthermal has. All right, here comes Euthermal with a Netherlands flag in his back pocket as he comes to move to the quarterfinals. Can he actually finish this one off? Here yeah. we go. Somehow, someway, Jim has to make a hold here. Well, I don't know if he's going to be able to. This is looking very grim for Jim. And Euthermal pushing forward right now. Landed Vikings in the back supporting. Zealots getting warped in, but they don't have charge. Barely having a single hit there. Yeah, and he's blinking backwards. Probes coming off the line here, but Euthermal knows it. GG is called, and Euthermal makes it to the quarterfinals and advances from group stages. Along with Snoot, we have two European players that are in the quarterfinals for the 10th edition of the Intel Extreme Masters here from Shenzhen in China. Pretty sick to see. Unfortunately, the local crowd uh, favorite here, Jim, will be eliminated. But, uh, you know, he put up a good fight. Unfortunately for him, just didn't work out that time. Not this time. Unfortunately, Jim will be back. Well, fortunately for Jim, he will be back with the World Championship Series Season 3. Just recently requalified back into that. But his road here at the Intellect Stream Masters comes to an end. A big difference compared to last year when he played, where he did finish semi-finals. Mm -hmm. But it is Euthermal who moves through in second place with CJ's hero. <laughs> CJ's hero, indeed. Yeah. Oh, he's my hero, it's really. It's not the Blue but... Jays, it's the CJ's. And he's a uh, hero is their star player. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a another strong... Protoss is down. Do you think we need Chobra anymore? Does, can can Rotterdam translate if we need it? 
We don't need Chover anymore. Oh, we should use him as the translator. Yeah, I think Chover. The thing is, I think U Thermal might actually translate Chover's had... better than Rotterdam in this he... situation. I think he does. I think Chover's had one too many Reddit threads. <laughs> Definitely. All right, well, let's uh, go ahead and throw it over to Pig. Pig, let us know how U Thermal's doing. U Thermal coming out of the group. Whoa, very close 2 1 victory. Congrats, U Thermal. How are you feeling, buddy? Oh, I'm feeling really good. I thought after the first series, it would be a second uh, smooth series, but it was really hard. So, like, I didn't even understand Cactus Rally. I'm like, okay. <laughs> just like twice my army, I'm like, sure, I guess. <laughs> and the last game I got really lucky with the Widow Mine, so I'm really relieved. You're relieved right now, you're feeling good. Going into tomorrow, you feel like you uh, you can go a bit further? Yeah, well, like TVP is supposed to be my best matchup, but it's it's kind of weak when I don't know my opponent. And like, of course, I don't really know the Chinese people, so uh, I think getting a TVT or TVZ would actually uh, give me a better performance. Than, uh, Show awesome. Now. All right, Roddy, you got a question? Uh, when you have, whenever you have a rematch like this, you know, you look at this group, and we already mentioned this at desk, obviously you go in with great intention, like you want to beat Hero, but you are very well aware of the fact that there's a good chance you play Jim twice. And we all kind of had the idea that the first series is going to play it out very different than the second series. And I think in the end, it truly proved like that. I kind of felt that Jim was a little reckless and careless in the first series, you know, just be really aggro. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't yeah. work. And the second work, I kind of, uh, second series, I kind of felt like he showed his trademark Colossus Phoenix style, which I'm sure you were aware of, right? Like that he loves to play like that. Yeah, well, actually, after the first series, I was really happy because I thought it was actually 100% perfect for me because uh, I really hoped it would be a 2 1 so I could see three games of him. Yeah. And also, it kind of felt like he showed his trump card with like the three gate aggression and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I felt, okay, the second series, I know what he's going to do, it's going to be really easy. But then he started playing uh, like. Not really macro, but like three base timings, yeah. and it was really tough for me to deal with. I kept doing like a two base aggressive opener, and I was so flustered. Like as you saw on um, Iron Fortress, the first series, yeah, yes, and the Cactus Rally, I just lost uh, so fast like that. Like uh, I'm still not sure why I lost, but uh, it's kind of tough for me. We were uh, actually we were, we were talking, uh, and and Dan was talking while commentating the game actually about the Cactus Valley game and the final game. You said you played two base. Right, you, you kind of took very late third command centers against the Phoenix Colossi style. In hindsight, do you think it was the right choice to go up to that five racks, that heavy army, or do you think you should have maybe gone the faster third base, faster second engineering bay, and played a little bit later? It was definitely the wrong choice for me, but uh, of course I was a bit scared because uh, everyone knows Jim is really aggressive, and yeah. I was like, especially in the Cactus game, he made two Immortals. I'm like, I actually didn't understand what he was doing. <laughs> I bet this is some Chinese crazy meta. <laughs> so uh, I kept on two base for too long. Normally, you should go for like a third C right after the factory. Uh, on Cax Valley, I actually did three racks, which is also a mistake. Like uh, I scouted the Stargate, and I hoped he was going for Oracles. Uh, and, uh, he went Phoenix, and that was kind of bad for me. Like three racks is usually okay, but not if they go for Phoenix, because uh, they can just lift the Marauders if you press in. It's kind of useless. But uh, yeah, I should have made a third C, but it's so scary to do that, right? Like. Uh, Especially you, when it's... Uh, you must have been getting a little bit nervous in that final game because you opened up with a lot of aggression and it didn't really do that much. You got a couple pros, but I don't think that was what you were hoping for, right? Uh, well, actually, like, uh, as soon as my Hellion pressure filled, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to have to look, play my max to win this game because mm -hmm. it was so difficult. And then I got really lucky with the Widowmine hit as yeah. well. And then, um, like, I kind of got an idea that if you play against the Histel, you would lose if you attack. Yes. So I, I was afraid of engaging, so it was kind of what I wanted. Like, I was still a bit behind, but uh, I was just trying to snipe his Phoenix so I get Vikings. And uh, uh, to be honest, I just got really lucky the last game. Like, there's no more to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you have made it to the quarterfinals of your very <laughs> yeah. first Intel Extreme Masters. I mean, you right. had a long journey. You even spoke about it a little bit off camera, that it was a little longer than it was supposed to be. Must feel pretty damn great, right? Yeah. Actually, like, uh, I was kind of worried as well, because like, not this night, but last night I slept for like two hours and I wasn't able to oh. sleep at all. And then tonight I slept from like eight to seven. <laughs> but uh, I was really all uh, rested. All right. <laughs> well, uh, you know, if you don't mind me interrupting as just the translator, I know I, know I don't guy? have the you know, greatest place here on the analysis desk, but I do have a question. You know, now that we're speaking about it, I, this is interesting because we keep highlighting it. It is a big deal. It's your first time in Asia where a lot of these players, like we live in Korea, we've traveled to China, we've been to Europe, we've been to California. Uh, now, something interesting is Korean players are known to always, you know, bring their own food and they're very picky about you know, what they eat. Do you feel any of that? Like, do you now sympathize with them? Like, oh man, first time in China, I don't know if I can really feel comfortable with all this food. 
Uh, no, actually not. I actually really like the food. Oh, okay. And it's uh, kind of strange for Koreans, because like me and the other people, I don't know if you guys like it too, but uh, I kind of like the Chinese food. And like the Koreans told me, like, ah, Korean food's better. So. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> Korean food is better. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. But yeah, you know, Koreans, like, they always bring their kimchi, like, and ramen and whatnot just as an emergency. But <laughs> as your first travel to China, you're feeling pretty comfortable now. I mean, it's been a couple days. You just won your, uh, you know, you're going through from your group in some place. Do you feel a little bit more settled in? Yeah, like, uh, when I went, took the plane here, well, in the plane, I was kind of nervous because it was, like, my first time in Asia, <laughs> and I was alone and stuff. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen, right? But actually, after, like, four hours, I'm like, oh, I really like China. It's really cool here. All so, right. Um, I kind of I like the environment. I like uh, you know the stuff around the malls and stuff, and it's, I feel really comfortable here. I, I have to interrupt here a little bit because I've been I've been talking with your Terran brother over here, Diego from Root Gaming, and <laughs> this Chinese food you're talking about. He told me that you had a breakfast that consisted of 20 chicken nuggets. That that's, that's, I don't know, man, but that's not very Chinese to me. So, do you have any comments on this? Well. <laughs> Before you play a tournament, you just need to fuel yourself up, Brad. You just need a little energy. So I, I just took like seven eggs and 20 nuggets. <laughs> you actually had 20 nuggets. So. <laughs> yeah, I just need a lot of energy to play. You know? It's funny. Yeah, we do we do have those chicken nuggets for our breakfast back at the hotel as well. Whatever works for you, man. Yeah. Whatever yeah. works for you. I don't know if we feel comfortable like casting and whatnot with 20 nuggets in our stomach, but if that's what got you the win, that's what got you the win. Congratulations once again. Moving on Thank to the you. quarterfinals. Happy to you know see you again tomorrow we look forward to it thank you for joining us here on the desk and for us here at the desk of course we are done with group c if you missed any of it we had some really good games i think we have a lot of fun games if you want to catch up on some of those highlights go over to plays.tv they do have some neat highlights all organized for you not just today yesterday and of course going forward that's the way you're going to catch up on all of our starcraft games at the intel extreme masters we'll be back with group d in the round of 16.